Hi. Hello. How are you? Okay, this is Sandy, and I'm going live today because I received the most awesome letter. But it was on YouTube. And YouTube is a bit of a different beast than Facebook. I have a lot of different followers, not a whole lot. It's a small channel for ECH. And it's kind of what you call in the doomosphere. That is kind of what, well, Mike Sliwa named it and Hambone picked it up and I got it from him. And it's like a genre of all of us climate change commentators and abrupt climate change commentators. You all know I had uh, Kevin Sandbloom on twice and he has a very successful YouTube. It's funny because he may have only, uh, I don't know, same amount of subscribers I do, but he gets a thousand five hundred views on his, his videos and I don't. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. I get squelched on few, uh, YouTube for some reason. I mean, on uh, Facebook and I get, you know, YouTube. Who the hell knows? But, you know, it's the quality, not the quantity. Right. And hello, Aaron. And hello, Karen. Thanks for joining me. So I got to read this letter because it's very poignant. And so is my response. Hey, Kim. So I, I see people are joining. And uh, I really, really, really thought this was a good one to share. I, I wanted to share this. So here we go. And he, oh, I got to qualify. I'm not going to say the, the person's name. And he wrote this to me and Kevin Sandbloom, two commentators on YouTube that are in the same genre, abrupt climate change. Okay. Hi, Sandy and Kevin. I'm posting this message to both of you on your YouTube channels because you seem to be among the more reasonable voices of the Doomosphere. While I respect and value the contributions of all who participate in this discussion, some voices I find disturbing due to apparent ideological certainty. It is understood that human psychology is averse to uncertainty and it and seeks evidence that affirms existing worldviews. This is known as cognitive bias. Some of your peers seem to disdain anyone who is uncertain of near-term collapse and extinction, assuming that lack of conviction is due to the absence of courage to face the grim facts and a weakness for hopium. Some even encourage hastening collapse in order to minimize the suffering of others. The situation is indeed dire. Tens of millions have already died due to climate change and environmental issues, mostly people of color who did little to cause this crisis. And more than a billion do not have access to food or water today. These are the courageous ones. However, likely collapse and extinction, it, it, more than, wait, however, likely collapse and extinction may be, the possibility of avoiding a downward spiral is not naive. Scientific rigor has not yet been applied to determining what factors determine our ability to persist and maintain civilization and how these con this conversation decades, uh, uh, oh my God, I'm not reading well today, sorry. Scientific rigor has not yet been applied to determining what factors determine our ability to persist and maintain civilization and how these parameters can be influenced. Paul Ehrlich of Stanford University, who was one of the people who started this conversation decades ago, he wrote, I believe, The Population Bomb, has established the Millennial Alliance for Humanity and the Biosphere to do just that. Today, Thousands around the globe are diligently working to develop innovative ways to reinvent agriculture and deliver food and water to those in peril. These people are the heroes of the Anthropocene era. Those who understand the severity of our crisis should encourage rather than discourage their efforts. The possibility of collapse and extinction has been apparent since the invention of the hydrogen bomb in the 50s. It is clear 
that surviving this century will require humanity to abandon political, economic, and even biological agendas, which have been established for millennia. This is not likely, but unprecedented, improbable phenomena occur regularly. Further, it remains possible that if we do survive this century, humans might develop asteroid deflection technology, which could potentially prevent more extinctions than we have caused. So it's a mistake to assume that the net impact of humanity on the biosphere is destructive. And he says the net, net impact. Okay, so we do a lot of things. Um, and I'm having a problem re a little reading it because it's very little. Okay. As a victim, now this is the person, as a victim of a neurological disorder for years, left me unable to walk or care for myself with little hope from doctors for recovery. I'm grateful for every day when I can walk, make my own coffee and wipe my own butt. I'm not averse to callous indulgence in hopium or for that matter, opium. If it gets me through the night, it is my sincere desire that as you keep up your important reporting, you do not succumb to certainty or dogma and focus on actions that help those who are in peril. I really liked it. He was uplifting to me. And you know, I, 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 I struggle and I'm going to read you what I wrote him back because the Doomosphere is a pretty interesting place. First, let's say hi. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> Hi, thanks for joining. And Dale, yeah, apparently we're in the Doomosphere. <laughs> Is it's a Gipper speech? <laughs> Let's read my my response because it is really about me and you know him and what he's feeling. And it's a very intimate place, this little part of the world we are. So I'm going to uh, uh, reply. I wish to reply, John. Your comment was well thought out, articulate, and from the heart. I do understand vacillating between hopium and a bit of doom. It can be a slippery slope because some of the, the science is so profound and compelling. On the other hand, you are living proof of, mag of magnificence that is the human spirit. I wish to use your letter to Kevin and myself as an inspiration to read when I am slipping down the other side which happens. I need to remind myself that there's a higher purpose that has found me here. The hopium isn't a disease. <laughs> it's a gift in some sense. This is why I interview progressive political candidates in the US. There is always a reason to fight for what is felt to be an ethical, and environmentally moral position. It is more imperative than ever to change the course of history if it can be done. When I read the piece um, about the British scientist and his terminal thoughts, I have to admit, it was hard not to give myself over. On the Facebook page, we, we publish 11 articles a day, every day, 24 seven. While I have a team, I am constantly reading this material. It can wear on you. But I am, again, vacillating between giving myself over and remaining with the hopium of making every day better and whatever little it is, doing something tangible in my own community. What good is it going to do me or anyone to be constantly steeped in the muck and mire of nihilism? Nope, that's not me. I really love my fellow comment commentators for their passion. More importantly, it is people such as yourself, and there are others in the doomosphere, who aren't fatalists, despite the name, who really keep me publishing on Facebook and researching what interests me, the Arctic, tree health, permaculture, fracking pipelines in the fossil fuel industry, um, among others, the opportunity to reach a worldwide crowd that I never have had the opportunity to reach is another compelling stronghold for me. Over at Facebook, we just got over 250 new followers from Brazil. That gives us a mandate to cover the world in what we present. Our website is up and running, and we are manning that, albeit slowly. 
when I started this, I had no idea what this would become. And now that it is becoming, and I have the responsibility to be as carbon neutral an editor and bring many voices to the table, that brings me full circle to your letter. As I stated earlier, this is just the type of resource that I can go back to for grounding. And I thank you for taking the time and reaching out. You know, I hear from a lot of people. And I have relationships. And Dale's asking, oh, wait, where am I? Okay. I just lost you guys. Let me get back here. Um, hmm. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Can you see me? I'm going to go to Chrome. Okay. So Dale's asking, this is what happens when you have this very sensitive touch thing and you're you know, a one-person show. So Dale's asking, is the Doomosphere a thing? Well, Dale... The Doomosphere is a thing on YouTube, and it's kind of a thing on Facebook. If you go to the near-term human extinction groups or the abrupt climate change groups, there's also a lot of scientists. But you see, not everyone feels it's doom and gloom. Like my husband's, I, I've told these people on YouTube, my husband you know, will call me Mrs. Doom and Gloom. And this is not true. It's just what I read and what I see and what I feel and what I know. Um, so it is hard. You vacillate between what the science is telling you and what, what you can do outside. I mean, it was snowing this morning and I made this little video because I'm just trying out to be a videographer with no experience in really shitty videos, but it was snowing and now it's just gorgeous. Not a cloud in the sky, maybe a couple of little clouds, blue, beautiful, windy and cold. I got the wood stove on, but so the doomosphere. I can publish some of the uh, commentators in the Dooman Sphere for anybody. There's Vegematic, there's a Humpty Dumpty Tribe, there's Kevin Sandbloom of the Black Bear News, who I've interviewed twice. I mean, there's a lot of commentators that have a voice there. And sometimes it's an echo chamber. And, you know, as I'm going to share this on YouTube, I have a close relationship with people, certain people, because we go back and uh, back and forth with with our ideas and our thoughts and, and 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 there's a lot of caring at least for me I have a lot of empathy and even the most as the man had pointed out in the letter you know the most ardent doomer the most ardent person that thinks that we are done as a, a, a species because we haven't stopped burning fossil fuels even they have something to do every day. Even they're alive, you know. They're not fatalistic to, to where um, there was a, a gentleman named Michael Rupert. And uh, I think I'm going to share some of his stuff for you guys. You may like it, you may not. But I found myself in a genre because I study abrupt climate change primarily and the Arctic ice. And I've shared... Torstein Vidal's information, and he has the Arctic Ice Group. There's a whole genre of science on Facebook and YouTube that outside of uh, the little um, thing we've made for us, you know, sometimes I, I go between. I'm in the political world. I'm in the left. I'm in the middle. I'm in, in, in the science world because I cover all of it. We cover all of it, you know, and you got to learn. You have to learn. There's things I don't talk about because I don't know enough about it. But I found people that are just absolutely amazing on both venues. I have the most amazing female people that I've met here on Facebook and the most amazing males over on YouTube. I only have um, 507, I think, subscribers. But, you know, it depends on who you interview. And I I don't seem to be breaking out, but that's okay. Again, I say it's quantity, I mean quality, sorry, over quantity, and all of you. Johnny says, yes, we do. We are all of it. We are all of it. You know, there's, there's ideas we all have, but the thing I can leave you with is if you have kids, and this is what I, I, I tell people, if you have kids or grandkids, teach them to grow and teach them 
to garden and teach them to build and teach them science. That's Those are the skills we're going to need for the future. We're going to need scientists because right now in the country, we are anti-science and I've said it on YouTube videos. Um, we have to get away from that. And our children, the millennials and all of them, my daughter's going to be 30. They do think differently. They're not happy with the status quo. They're not happy with capitalism the way it is. They're not happy with income disparity. They're not happy with student loans that are just skyrocketing, skyrocketing like my kids, you know. Um, there's just so much out there. But I'm learning, you know, at this late age, I'm learning to grow my own food and can and freeze and all that. I didn't do this before I met Doug. I was a business person working in the university HR office. <laughs> I didn't do any of it. And Cindy Kay, who is on another uh, uh, channel who used to be with us, has just finished a whole permaculture series and we're gonna have her back on to talk about it. My property is, you know, perfect for permaculture. Um, Johnny, you said, no, they're not. Um, no, they're not. The kids know we can do better. Absolutely, the kids know we can do better. And they have to. But I don't ever want to feel like we're leaving them a whole mess, my generation of the boomers. But you know what? <laughs> I lived through the 80s. I lived through the 90s. I watched all this happen. I had a career. I was clueless. I knew about everything environmental. I fought fracking. I went to D.C. I went anti-war you know, demonstrations. I knew about it all. But until I took a walk on the Doomosphere, and I started studying abrupt climate change and doing this page to educate and tell people that this is real and it's happening. But I, I, you know, not to scare, but it is happening. And the people that I have brought on with all the various voices are the difference. They make the difference. And I'm gonna keep doing it as long as I can. I might as well tell you, I may have to have neck surgery because I can't do anything with my left arm and I am in a lot of pain. So you may see me coming on with a neck brace. I don't know what's going to happen because we're having this big party that I invited the whole world to. So August. So for today, I'm really glad that you guys came. I'll put up some links to some really interesting people. If you follow our page, we put these people's videos on. I do share so much information. Our page is like this wealth of information and the, and the website is up, echnet.org. It's up. And we have two people joining that are going to administrate along with, along with, um, Linda who, who built it using Joomla. So it's kind of exciting, but I have to be in, in better, in better health. You know, I have to get the things taken care of. I can't do things. I can't do things. I can't work out. I, you know, I can't do the things I used to do. I don't have the, the, the muscle strength, but I'm going to fix myself because we have a lot to do outside. We just built a greenhouse, as you probably all know, planting. I mean, there's just so much to do and it never stops. <laughs> and where's my girl? Oh, Zhenang. Hello, my dear. Hello. I, I can never shash and narrow up. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. She knows I love her. She knows I love her. And she has made. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, she's made a, um, I gotta find the comment. Oh, okay. She's made the sister page at MeWe. So we have a MeWe. We have a Twitter. We have everything you know, going for us. But of course, the Twitter's a one woman show right now. It's all I do. And you don't want to go to Twitter because it's not really that great yet. You know, I don't have too many voices. Um, and Karen says this place ECH. Ah, well, Karen, you know, I love you. When you followed me, we've known each other for since the election. And that's, you know, how I started, right? With all of you. <sighs> it's a good day. Started out snowing. I got to play with my video crap and I got to tell you guys about a letter. I got to tell you about the Doomosphere, <laughs> which is a thing. And the scientists like Paul Beckwith that I share and um, I've interviewed Guy McPherson twice and I've interviewed the, um, 
um, Nicholas Humphreys, the, the, the meteorologist lately, I interviewed Johnny I, and he has a voice in climate change and fixing it and remediating it. But these people are all, I guess, what we call in the doomosphere, because if you're talking about abrupt climate change and the melting Arctic ice, it's a, it's, it's a thing. It's a real thing. Things are changing. They're going to change. They are changing in my yard. I have videos up on YouTube of the destruction of the trees that are just insane. And I don't always come on Facebook because Facebook pisses me off because Facebook always blocks me. I'm blocked in jail right now. And if I want to get out and I wanted to for Nikia and her show, I have to pay them to boost because I can't share enough. And it's not, it's not, you know, and we are really a little, we're, we're a small little genre. We don't go into everything in the political sphere. We stay with, you know, the environment. And I want to thank you all. <laughs> yeah, my face out here. Well, it's because I just have this calling. I don't know. I don't know, but boy, this is really a nice admiration society today. <laughs> thank you. It's just, it's not easy. But I will tell you that um oh a very prominent water protector mother from no dapple movement is with you see there's concurrent movements for the earth even just the doomosphere part not all of us are nihilists and fatalists so listen i'm not going to keep you guys any longer thank you i'm gonna go take a walk because it's not snowing and it's actually nice out. Not time to throw the jacket away though. Not quite yet. Uh, oh, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. We haven't seen Heidi in a while. She just got out of Facebook jail. <laughs> Boy. Oh, and Trevor's going to go to his life. Okay. We have to see uh, Trevor. Okay. Well, everybody, just know the letter was good. The guy that wrote me, he was awesome. And I wanted to share it. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about, you know, walking and walking on the wild side there. Peace. Peace. Thank you, everyone, for all your support. It really is great. And I can't wait for that website to have original content. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks.